Facebook and how we approach Facebook sort of informed uh, our approach on YouTube. So I haven't got YouTube wrong for five years, just sort of about a year or so ago we were like, we've really got to try and work out YouTube. You know, and if you look at where our customers are, uh, when we survey them and say, you know, what social media platforms you're on, about three quarters of, a, of, of our customers are on Facebook every day. It was well over a quarter on YouTube every single day. And particularly if you think, think our core customer is kind of 32 year old mum lives in Wigan, some people in our business were surprised that one in four are on YouTube every single day consuming content. So I know it's probably old hat to say it, but these days everyone's on social media and everyone's consuming these channels. So it's not a kind of just a young thing, it's clearly a core target market thing. That said, most of our investment, most of the media money that we spend our, our effort on is TV, press and radio, like we've always done. And it's increasingly hard to justify the amount of spend that we put on those channels, but it's kind of the crutch that we've always used. So it's going to be a brave marketing director, Asda, that says, I'm not going to do any more press advertising because I can't prove it works. It does work, but where was the diminishing return? And there's loads and loads of work, as you can imagine, going on trying to work out where that point is. But Facebook kind of paved the way. So we, we had an organic approach on Facebook. We had no budget. We're in the PR team. So even though we're part of Asda and Asda's part of Walmart and I'm sure if you work in a small organisation, you're probably looking enviously at big organisations, the amount of money they had. The PR team were doing social part-time. Most of the time was answering the phone to Sean Poulter or people at the Daily Mail. Um, and we had to grow it organically because we had no other choice. The only reason we went on to Facebook was because there were 15 unofficial Facebook pages at the time for Asda, one of which was bring back the mooing cow sheds. So if you're of a certain age, you're probably smiling because you remember the, ca the mooing cow sheds at Asda. If you're not of that age, we used to have big cow sheds, all the milk, and there was a daisy the cow and a big button. If you press the button, it went right? mooing cow shed. We also had a clucking hen shed. Quite hard to say that, particularly <laughs> when you're being videoed. Um, Anyway, they gradually they got taken out. They, you know, they broke or colleagues were behind the scenes giving them a kick because they hated that. Maybe five percent. So we had to go onto Facebook because we had to reclaim the brand. There were customers talking to us, but they weren't actually talking to Asda. They were talking to each other. And if you remember, Facebook was all about fans. You know, the original Facebook about five six years ago, fan pages were set up by people who loved stuff. So there were customers who really really loved Asda. So they set up a fan page for Asda. Unfortunately, other customers were then asking them, do you have this dress in a size 8? And they were saying, maybe. And we were sat on the sides, not even <laughs> participating. So we had to go there whether we wanted to or not. But that organic approach and having no money to put behind advertising meant that every single bit of content we stuck on the page, the only way we were going to grab a fan, and you know, I remember the day we sat there in the PR team, put the Facebook page live, had a big TV screen, and you're sort of like, oh, we've got three fans. Oh, we've got 16 fans now. And it was just fascinating to think there were that many people in the UK on Facebook at that moment that we put the page live who went, search Asda, oh, they've got a fan page like. That immediacy was like, bloody hell. And all right, it was only 16 people, and by the end of the hour, it was like 52 people. <coughs> so when we did our first post, we had a chance of 50 people seeing it. Reality is maybe five saw it. If they liked it, that would then turn up in their friends' news feeds. And then there was a chance that of their 120 friends, or what it was at the time, you know, maybe 20 of those would see it, and they might like it, and then it would expand out. So the first six months of having a Facebook audience, no money, just content-driven, we got to about 50,000, 60,000 fans. Then Facebook gave us one bit of insight that was really, really good, because a load <laughs> of the other stuff they told us was really trying to engineer us to spend money on the platform, which we didn't have, so it was kind of falling on deaf ears. The one insight they gave us, which was brilliant, was if you take the content that's working well on your page and you promote that into the news feeds of friends of your existing fan base, then you'll recruit loads more fans. And the thing about people on Facebook is it tends to be people you like, not always, it's people from work you hate, people from your school you haven't seen for 20 years you really <coughs> don't like. Um, but it tends to be people like you. So they tend to live near you, they tend to shop like you, they tend to have the same interests as you. Therefore, it was quite a good recruitment strategy to take content that was already resonating with Asda customers and then promote that into the news feeds of other Asda customers. And from there, we went to like a quarter of a million fans. But all the way along, it was about the engagement of that content. It wasn't about just advertising stuff. You know, Asda's got a furniture sale on its furniture website. Who cares? It was, we, we found topics that we knew were resonating. 
So our customers have a very sweet tooth. We talk about cake, biscuits, or ice cream, it works. Tiger bread, everyone loves tiger bread. Um, but interestingly, when we put them in charge of making some really simple decisions, and any industry you can do this, it doesn't have to be a retail industry, we just started to involve people further up the chain. So rather than just coming into a store and being hit with whatever we decided to put on the shelves that day, we could take a product and we could hand over some of the control of dictating what that product was going to be. Now this isn't about saying to somebody, please design a new dress, but it might be, here are the final designs of that dress, should the button be blue or green? So, you know, very simple that you can do on Facebook, A, B, C, you don't have to jump them out to some clever app, you don't have to ask them to upload, you know, their family history, they don't have to write an essay. Bearing in mind that that customer, typically on Facebook, and this has sort of informed our approach, is sat outside the school gates, it's three o'clock, they've got five, ten minutes before the kids come out, and they just get the phone out of the pocket, they're just flicking through. Well, it's not anything more than that, it's quite light touch. But that light touch, when you've got a quarter of a million people following your fan page, means that a touch of a button from our head office, we can suddenly talk to maybe, what, 50,000 people for free. Now, not for free, because obviously there's a load of investment going into building out the page, but a year before that, we didn't have that opportunity to engage with those customers. So we weren't looking at it to sell more donuts necessarily, or to sell more George dresses. We were looking at how can we engage, how can we sort of seed our brand into lots of conversations in a way that was relevant to them, was relevant to us. So it wasn't just Andy Murray's one, the Wimbledon, so hooray for Andy Murray. You know, who cares? What's that got to do with Asda? Well, no relationship with Andy Murray. So just following the buzz, because that's what everyone's talking about, we resisted that temptation. That's really, really hard. Uh, and to think that we're really consistent, we've got it all work, worked out, we haven't. So I used to say that Andy Murray anecdote every conference I went to, and then the day that Andy Murray won Wimbledon, the George Facebook page went, hooray, Andy Murray's won Wimbledon. But no! <laughs> like a complete knobhead. <coughs> so it's driven by good content, in content that's already working, it's already engaging, it's already relevant to who the audience are, but then we can boost it and get it into loads and loads of news feeds for not a lot of spend. So this one was on uh, Frozen. <laughs> 